Well, we continue with this rather dynamic extreme pattern across the continent, but we are seeing changes taking place. Thanks for clicking on to the Wednesday edition of Vogan's European Outlook. It is hump day, and I hope you're all safe and well wherever you are today. Before we continue with the video, you know the drill. Like, share, and subscribe. I do greatly appreciate everybody's support at this time. Uh, live stream this coming Sunday and on Saturday. I hope to have a tropical outlook as well. So plenty of reason to stick around looking not just at the UK, Europe and Ireland, but also across the planet as well. And the extremes that are taking place around the world that will be discussed in quite a bit of detail on the live stream this Sunday afternoon at 4 p.m. So anyway, as I said, quite a dynamic situation going on at the moment. We've had a lot of cool across the northwest, heat across the southeast. What we are seeing is the cool continuing to press eastwards and southeastwards. That is going to um, not only ease the heat, but it's also triggering a lot of severe weather. Uh, that initiated all the way back across to the relative near continent as we uh, began the new work week late weekend in the early day. Uh, uh, last week and uh, now we've got a situation where that severe threat is continuing to progress uh, southeastwards and we are seeing flash floods, large hail, damaging winds and even some tornadoes in some spots as well as that uh, frontal system that is pushing in essentially Arctic air but it, it, it is obviously highly modified by the time it reached them. Um, the central portions of Europe. But as that uh, collision of air masses takes place, we see the big blossoming cumulonimbus uh, clouds that uh, develop uh, very, very severe weather. And you can see here as we play through this GFS, two meter temperature animation here, this is the anomaly. And you can see that as we began the work week, we had quite the contrast here, exceptionally cool conditions across many areas of Western Europe here, essentially all of Western Europe was in uh, you know modified arctic air then we had a lot of heat across the southeast of the continent here and in between that is the battle zone now we actually did begin a uh, you know the weekend with uh, that that heat across iberia temperatures into the low to mid 30s now we have a, a, a fresher air mass now pushed uh, through and through the balearic islands we actually seen uh, severe flooding take place at the uh, La Palma uh, airport and I'll show you the, the, the captures in just a second here but it's as that frontal system met the hot humid air that produced some very very uh, severe weather indeed and you can see here as we play through this loop here the cold air continues to expand its coverage across the continent and it's really only Greece and Turkey that is essentially clinging on to the uh, to the significant heat that we have uh, seen in recent times here as we continue to play through this you notice here that it clings on to uh, especially turkey up across the black sea in the eastern uh, parts of uh, of ukraine and far southwestern russia here but the majority of europe by the time we reach the end of this week will be in much fresher air meanwhile we've got an area of low pressure that is going to dominate the UK pattern as we move through the course of the weekend here. A lot less cool compared to what we did see to start this work week. And we'll get to that in just a second here. But you can see if we look at the, at the severeweather.eu on Twitter, there is some very, very interesting video coming out of several parts of southern Iberia. So this was the flooding that was captured here. This is actually volcanic on Twitter showing the severe flood waters running down the streets of Mercy in Spain. And uh, this essentially is just basically a collision of air That's all this is. Um, so uh, pretty wild stuff uh, in mainland Iberia. And then as we play through, you can see here other severe flooding taking place here where's this this is a uh, valencia in 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 on the east Coast. here so um pretty interesting stuff and then this was the video capture from palma airport 
in <laughs> Pretty crazy stuff actually going on in the Balearics and southeastern Iberia in recent times. This is another video here capturing the flow in Alma. <laughs> Nasty conditions, and this was the scene that we've seen in other parts of Europe as we've progressed through the course of this week. So, uh, so yeah, um, this was a uh, part of Austria. Back on the eighth of, of June, so we're going back several days ago. <laughs> Europe has really had quite a rough time. The uh, flooding, severe weather. Here's some uh, large hail being reported here in parts of Estonia. Building hail men or hail women or whatever you want to say these days. So, uh, yeah, this was in Estonia, lightning striking this particular tree here as well. So, pretty wild stuff going on across the continent. Um, and not just this, this past week, we've had quite a, a wild situation ongoing through uh, the second half of spring so what are we looking at as we go forward let's have a look and see what the ecm uh, the the gfs ensemble sorry is shown here for the upcoming five days so i've already alluded to the fact that the cool pattern is easing in intensity and uh, but we still don't see any major warmth to speak about in the next wee while so this is the upcoming five days of the gfs ensemble you can see here quite widely cooler than average conditions in the six to ten day here it is indicating average to slightly below average conditions across the uk and ireland here so this is the now, now taking this, the period between the 17th and the 22nd of june and there's all indications starting to point to a warming trend towards the final week of june so we will watch this space as we go forward but certainly week one looks like this of the cfsv2 into week two into week three you see that recovery in temperature here so this is a period so we don't actually see warmer than average seen by the cfsv2 until week three which is then beyond the 26th of june so overall this month is looking below average the last five days this is how the two meter temperature anomaly is looking like across europe and we've got two areas of uh, uh, you know kind of tealy color greeny color this is representing a five day anomaly of about four to five Celsius below average uh, across the northwest of Scotland and also inland areas of southern Norway as well. But that is quite a notable um, cold anomaly for the month of June across the continent and uh, also uh, the warm anomaly across the southeast of the continent here. Quite a distinct northwest to southeast contrast in temperature. Looking at the current temperatures across Europe here, like I said, the heat still present over Greece, Turkey, up into uh, Bulgaria, and they uh, gradually starting to slow, uh, slowly ease in intensity across Romania, Moldova, western portions of Ukraine. Uh, as you can see here, as the, the, the cooler, fresher air from the Atlantic stroke Arctic continues to move east south eastwards here notice here that we've still got some warmth across southern iberia but nowhere near as uh, as warm as it has been you can see the balearics here starting to slowly uh, recover uh, in temperature after the severe flooding that we've seen over the last 24 hours but inland parts of western turkey as high as 42 celsius at the moment here looking at uh, the uk temperatures not just as fresh as they have been we're still holding on to uh, a temperature of 9.9 .9 at local Skarnik, by the way. So still holding on to fresh conditions compared to the average, uh, but not just as cold as it was yesterday, where the temperature only hit 8.9 Celsius in local Skarnik here. Uh, go back a year ago, and uh, it was uh, summer-like conditions. But you can see here, all the way down to the south coast of England, 15, 16 Celsius is very fresh for the time of the year. 
across England. Portland Bill, for example, only recording 14.8 Celsius at the moment here. So that is a notably chilly afternoon uh, down on the Isle of Portland, even St Catherine's Point on the south coast of uh, the Isle of Wight, only 15.3. We've only got uh, um, uh, 14.3 further east. And uh, Langdon Bay, only 13.3. Now get up into East Anglia and you've only got 12s and 13s at both uh, Norwich and also Tibbenham Airfield here, 12.9. So a very, very cool afternoon yet again across the majority of the UK. Like I say, some of these figures across the north a little bit warmer than they have been in the last few days. You could argue that it's actually slightly cooler than yesterday across parts of far southern England and uh, also Wales as well. Across Ireland at the moment here, generally mid-teens to speak about. The same for Northern Ireland as well here. Not much rain to speak about this afternoon. You notice here the radar rather quiet. Uh, we've got a few showers uh, in parts of Lincolnshire and uh, in Norfolk and Suffolk this afternoon. They're largely high and dry across the rest of the UK and Ireland at this moment in time. So you can see here, this is an interesting graphic here by Thomas uh, Pukic. Uh, and you can see the uh, est effects graphic here. Now, I'm not going to go into too much detail here, but essentially this shows the areas of severe weather potential. Now, when you've got hot, humid conditions across the southeast, you've got fresher, cooler conditions across the northwest. This battle zone here between central Liberia southern France, through the Alpine region, North Italy, for example, all the way to Eastern Europe here. This is the battle zone of atmospheric pre um, uh, temperature profile here, and you've got the severe weather in between. So heavy flood and rain is going to continue over the next few days, and obviously southern Germany, parts of Italy, Austria, uh, has seen a very, very uh, nasty past period of time with regards to flooding. It'll be interesting to see if this has a, a, an impact on a potential maximum temperatures during the course of the, the rest of the summer. It'll be interesting to see how hot it can get with the amount of water in the ground. It'll be interesting to see if there's any kind of limitation in terms of that heat. But certainly, uh, damaging winds, large hail, and flooding is a threat ongoing across southern and eastern portions of Europe as that cool air continues to progress eastwards here. So no real imminent threat of a uh, of severe heat moving our way anytime soon this is of the arpege model today looking at the total accumulated precipitation you can see here plenty of rain across southern areas of europe at the moment here across the uk not a huge amount um i have to be honest with you we've got a few areas west uh, central lowlands parts of the down and, and uh, parts of the down coast uh, along the west coast of uh, the Republic of Ireland as well, west coast of Wales, uh, northwestern England, uh, parts of the southwest of uh, of the UK, seeing some higher rain totals. If we look at uh, the UK specifically, you can see here what the uh, rain totals we're speaking about with regards to the next period between generally, what would this be, this Sunday, all the way between now and Sunday the 16th of June. And we don't have a huge amount of rain to speak about. There's parts of London and the southeast that may struggle to see a millimetre or two of rain. Like I say, higher totals, generally in the kind of 30 to 40 millimetre range uh, along the down coast here, western central belt, west and south Wales, and up the western side of the Republic of Ireland, parts of uh, just the south of Dublin, just to the north of Dublin as well. We could see 30, 40 millimetres of rain, but not a huge deal to speak about between now and the 16th of June here. So this is only the period, obviously, up until Sunday. Uh, so, uh, so yeah, um, let's have another quick check and see what else we can look at with regards to the overview chart. So like I say, we're looking at the Arpege model, the French model, this afternoon. So there uh, is that area of low pressure moving in. So we are seeing changes taking place here, but a lot of high pressure still to the north of the uh, of Europe here at the moment, and that has been the mainstay. If we look at the uh, the the Manjulian oscillation, it's quite uh, pronounced in phases seven and eight. That promotes uh, northerly blocking 
And if we also look at the our, uh, North Atlantic Oscillation, you can see here that we are actually back at neutral once again. But it's expected to go back negative, which is quite interesting. And I'll explain uh, how that may uh, send another lobe of cold air next week, by the way, across the UK and Ireland here. Notice that we have the, uh, the NAO expected, according to the GFS Ensemble, to go back towards neutral uh, toward during the second half of the month. But it's interesting how we go from the, the most negative since early April back to neutral, and then it's going back negative once again. And it could be to do with the, the phase 7, 8 of the NJO. Now, if we look at the Arctic Oscillation as well, you can see here that it is a, a actually slightly positive, but it, it too, along with the NAO, actually goes slightly negative. So if we go back to the, the, the task in hand, because I do have a habit of bouncing back and forward, you can see here off the R page, there's that area of low pressure moving in. So this is the kind of neutral NAO signal here with lower pressure and a slightly flatter west to east orientation of the pattern. But keeping our eyes on that area of high pressure to the north, because that is essentially locking this feature in for the course of the weekend. So we've got this main band of precipitation moving through during the course of tomorrow. That is going to bring a, a fairly wet uh, spell for a few hours. And then uh, that area of rain kind of fragments. And then essentially we get this area of low pressure that kind of just spins around over the UK and Ireland late this week and through the majority of the weekend. Showers, blustery showers, longer spells of rain where you've got these uh, these bands that kind of just kind of sit in, in one place for one period of time. And we do have windy conditions uh, a little bit away from the centre of the low. So much of the mainland may not have particularly windy conditions, but along the coast of both the north and the south, in the outer perimeter of that circulation, we've probably got windier conditions. But you're going to have the, the showers and longer spells of rain continuing to spiral around this feature through the course of the weekend here but there is some models indicating that this feature eventually while it's slow uh, to move around you know generally between friday and sunday there is some indication that this feature then moves eastwards and allows another push of northerly winds to move southwards so if we look at the uh, gfs model here real quick and we'll finish at this you can see here as we play through the loop that area of low pressure moves in, it kind of sets up shop over the UK and Ireland through the course of the weekend. And then as, as we move into the early portions of next week, it looks as if we have got a little bit of a, a void once again here in terms of being in between weather systems. This latest run of the GFS isn't really indicating a northerly flow, but if we look at the 850s, we'll see what it's showing. Certainly last night it was indicating that we had fresher air moving back south again. So yeah, it's indicating something. This is the here and now in terms of the 850 temperatures. We lose the connection to that north flow. Then we've got the, some fresh air cycling around underneath that area of low pressure. Hence why we've still got below average temperatures, by the way. Even though the temperatures are nudging up a few degrees, they're still going to be suppressed for the time of the year. Notice we've got some heat trying to build back in over Spain and Portugal once again. But as we move into next week, you notice here, yes, there is an indication that the heat is going to try to lift north. But all the while, we've got colder air moving down from the north here. So we've got this battle going on here. Heat trying to lift north, but we've also got cold trying to push south once again. And it looks as if the cool may win out through at least the early to middle portions of next week. So it looks as if we're going to maintain, like the CFS V2, like the GFS ensemble indicates, this cool theme is going to maintain itself. And this 2 meter temperature anomaly that we've got going at the moment is likely to maintain itself. It would take, like I've said before, a, a major surge of warmth through the final week of the month to turn this below average June around. So that is my thinking overall. And I don't think we're going to see a 30 Celsius in the month of June this year. So anyway, I think I've waffled on long enough. Hope you enjoy the rest of your Wednesday and I'll see you hopefully tomorrow with more. Like, share and subscribe. Thanks again. Bye for now.